Springfield, Pennsylvania. So what is this? It's like nothing anyone should see on the public highway, but hey, wait a minute. It's turning into the field. Maybe it's a newfangled potato planter or something. No, sir, it's an aerial plane with turntable wings. George Spratt, the inventor, figured that's how she could taxi along the highways and maybe the skyways. The experts give 10 to 1. She can't fly. Georgie's set on taking a chance, and there he goes! the time the experts got fooled. Good boy, George. In this ship here with a three-wheel landing gear, any kind of a landing is perfectly all right, frontwards or sideways, one wheel, or any other way that you wish. The GP ascender steers with a wheel instead of the conventional rudder bar, both in the air and on the ground. Similar to this, the flippers are handled by the fore and aft motion of the stick and the ailerons by the side motion. The throttle is directed behind the wheel like a Model T Ford. All right, Andy, let's go. Why shouldn't it raise an airplane? Perhaps that's what Mr. Jonathan Caldwell thought when he designed and built this contraption, which is being shown to the public for the first time. The mill wheels going round are supposed to represent the flapping wings of a goose. The wheels turn all right, but it just won't leave the ground, not even when they drag it. It moves, though, and that's something. But any auto will go pretty well downhill. A good idea just the same, Professor, and better luck next time. Don't laugh. This thing that looks as if half of it was missing really works. It's a new tubular plane invented by an Italian engineer who believes this design will someday break all records for speed and stability. You've often seen a barrel roll, but here's one that flies. to its inventor, Dr. Snyder. He calls it the flying wing, and experts think it's going to revolutionize aviation. It's supposed to be foolproof and has lots of speed and pep, as the doc's going to show you right now. Here she goes. Looks as if the inventor copped his idea from a butterfly. Being all wing turns it into a glider in case the motor gets heebie-jeebies and makes tail spins impossible, Dr. Snyder claims. It can top 100 miles an hour, and is supposed to be as safe as old Dobbin for the family. If what the doc says comes true, we'll all be hopping around in these pancakes very soon. No, it's not an airplane, and it isn't a balloon. It's a spindle airship. The new invention that has excited aeronautical engineers. Perhaps Mr. Popper, the inventor, will explain the idea for us. In place of wings, we use spindles on this ship. The large ones are the main lifting lifters, and the small ones act as stabilizers. This is done by spiraling 
so that the landing with speed would be about five to 10 miles per hour. Now as they revolve, the spindles with their little indentations are creating a lifting vacuum above. Engineers predict the spindles will be more efficient than the wings of an airplane. There's only this about the spindle airship. She hasn't flown yet, but who can say she won't? The latest in aviation, which the inventors hope will be the family flavor of the air. And it really works. The single circular wing allows a quick takeoff, and it can go 135 miles an hour. Don't worry about engine trouble. That pancake top allows it to drop slower than a parachute. And it can land at your front door. Maybe it's the future aerial taxi. answer to the call issued by the Aeronautics Director of the Department of Commerce or a flivver of the air. It is my hope that someday that this little ship will become the great great granddaddy of America's air flivver. Just a pair of wings and a place to sit. And what a place. The tiny craft weighs 1,100 pounds and has a wing spread of only 30 feet. A device on the wing tips controls direction. For 20 years, he's been watching the Tilly Luberg and has finally discovered what makes it fly. All it takes is a tank full of oxygen, a left-handed monkey wrench, and a couple of nuts. Right. Here we go. <laughs> History in the making. It's the happiest day of the professor's life. Let's hope he's put salt on its tail. Going, going, that's all. Something new to make flying safer. Stabilizers like these keep the plane level while in flight. The pilot's taking up the ship to show you how the device works. There he is getting out of the cabin, leaving the plane completely under automatic control. See how smoothly it flies without a human hand to guide it. Now the pilot's on the fuselage, and no one is in the cockpit. The test is a success and should encourage one-armed drivers who want to hug their girls. More convincing proof of the amazing and rapid progress of aviation you wouldn't want, I'm sure, than this demonstration at Baltimore today, J. Carl Bauer and Lewis Huber went to work in their spare time to construct this poor man's dream, a plane propelled by bicycle pedals. It's a momentous occasion. All aviation stops to watch. Did someone say they laughed at the Wright brothers? Well, this pair will try again, too. Maybe uh, make a bicycle out of airplane parts. Paris offers a real novelty in aircraft. It's called the elytroplane, and it's based on the principles of a flying mosquito with the sting left out. Its tail sticks up in the middle and is supposed to prevent slips and nosedives. Now we'll see what we will see. It 
works. The brainchild of inventor Vicomte de Rouge speeds 60 miles an hour. For five years, the Vicomte has been laughed at, but now it is he who has the laugh. Folks, here I am with a new device called the Ornithopter. Uh, this device, uh, I expect to attain flight in the air. Through a system of leverage advantage, plus a man's physical power, I believe it possible to fly as a bird. <clears throat> and here I am, you can look this device over. <clears throat> it appears heavy, <clears throat> it's light. Well, that sounds okay, if it works. But if Bertie doesn't fly, when he makes that jump, he's going to get a real cold bath. Here he goes. splash -o. Well, he got the bath all right. But is little water discouraged? Not a bit. Just wait a moment, and you'll see. Now his feathers are all dry again. And he's had a good dinner of canary seed, so maybe this time he'll really do it. He's going to soar gracefully off the rock, so he says. Keep your eye on the Bertie. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Here you see another type helicopter or direct lift air machine. Our principle, as you will see, is a flat plate or disc type propeller moving the air fast enough to produce a lift. Our engine is connected to our transmission by a jack shaft driven by a chain. Our transmission rotates and reciprocates our propeller. As the propeller goes up, we get our lifting power on the down reciprocation. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll show you how this works. pump chap there is a butcher by trade, but in his spare moments he's a student of aerodynamics. And right now he's demonstrating in a small way the principle of a new rocket device he's working on. Oops. Something must have gone haywire. But here's the real thing, Jack's bicycle rocket glider. And he's all set for a tryout here at the Metropolitan Airport. If it'll just work as he hopes, he'll be famous tomorrow. Then goodbye loin chops and rump steaks. The dog collar he's putting on is an ingenious arrangement which will enable him to aid the flight of his craft by a gentle flapping of the wings. So. With a little help from everything but gravity, Cohen gets his remarkable flying machine underway at terrific speed. That is, it'll get up speed if the assistant rocket engineer will only hurry up and put a match to the power plant. Oh, 
There goes another dream up in smoke. The idea wasn't so hot, but Cohen's burning up. What he should have next time is a pair of asbestos pants. <laughs> <laughs>